Now that we've created a database and we've configured our Rails project to connect to that database, we need to begin to flesh out the contents of the database, the structure or the schema. And we're going to do that by writing Rails migrations. So you're probably wondering, what in the world is a migration? Well, a migration is simply a set of database instructions. It's going to be written in Ruby, and they're going to allow us to migrate our database from one state to another. They're going to essentially describe the changes that should take place in our database. So we create a table, we add a column, we drop a table, we change the name of a column. Those are all the kinds of instructions that we could give it. And it's going to contain both instructions for moving up to a new state and also moving back down to the previous state. So we might move up by creating a table. We'd move back down by dropping the table. Move up by adding a column or maybe even adding three columns. Move back down by removing those three columns. So we'll have instructions that go both ways that allow us to migrate the state of our database. Why use a migration? Well, it keeps our database schema with our application code. And our application depends on the database being a certain way. So since they're so closely coupled together, we want to make sure that the description of the database is stored right alongside our application code. It's also because it's written down. Because these instructions are there, we can execute them anytime we need to, and they're repeatable. So let's say that I take my project and I move to a new computer, and I want to create the database there. Well, guess what? All I have to do is run my migrations again, and I can execute everything and get my database in the same state. There's no trying to remember what SQL commands you type or keep track of those. The migrations have all those instructions written down. The fact that they're written down has another benefit, which is that we can share those changes with other developers. So let's say that we're both working on a project together. If I add a column to one of my tables, you also are going to need to add a column to your table if the code's going to keep working for you. So if we share that file, you can run the migration, and then our databases will both be in the same state. It also helps with versioning. If you're using a version control system like Subversion, Git, or CVS, this allows you to not only roll back the code to a certain state by checking out a previous revision, but you can actually then migrate your database to that state and then back again when you're done. Another benefit is that it allows us to write Ruby code instead of writing SQL. Now we still can write SQL in there, and there'll be some times where it might be desirable, but it will minimize that and allow us to work with Ruby, which we're going to be working with most of the time anyway. The other nice benefit is that it's going to have access to our Rails application code. Where that pays benefits is if we need to make changes to the data based on what's already in there. So let's say, for example, that I have a first name and a last name for a user. I want to add a new column to the database that takes the first name and the last name and puts them together into a new field. So I just have full name, and that's a new column in my database. Well, I can boot up the application code in my migration. I can go get the first name and the last name, put them together with whatever rules I have in my application code, and restore them in my new column. Populate the column as I add it. That's a nice benefit. Now, I've given you a lot of reasons why migrations are really useful and really helpful. At the same time, I have to admit that they're not perfect. There are issues that come up when you're sharing schemas with other people, when someone makes changes to an old migration, or when you get your database into a state where suddenly a migration won't run anymore, and you have to go in and actually tinker with it till you get it to where a migration will run again. They're not perfect. But that said, life using migrations is much better than without them. It is definitely something that will make your life working with databases a lot better. Let's see how we can create migrations.